In recent years, uh, the opening strategy changed fundamentally. Of course, there are many force lines, uh, which are very long. Some of the lines, uh, especially in Sicilian, in Nidorf, uh, with Queen B6 uh, lines, there are around 40 moves. Uh, one of the top players, Andrei Volokitin, once told me that one of his analyses in this Queen B6 line goes 66 moves. Can you imagine? But there is new strategy which are appearing in the opening. Uh, in the opening, generally, uh, in 80s, very popular strategies were with the pawn sacrifice uh, to grab initiative immediately, to fight for initiative from the first moves. Uh, this strategy was developed by uh, such grandmasters as uh, Oleg Romanishin and then upgraded by Gary Kasparov himself, who scored a lot of games uh, with the pawn sacrifices. And this way of playing became uh, uh, very normal in, in modern chess. And there are many, many variations nowadays which we can call modern gambits. But suddenly, a few years ago, it appeared completely new strategy, even more aggressive strategy. It is a strategy of sacrifice uh, of exchange immediately in the openings. Let us see a few examples. A game won you against Magnus Carlsen. D4, knight f6, Greenfeld line, bishop f4, which variation is considered to be very technical, uh, I can say even, okay, it's ambitious line. We can't say that this line is without uh, ambition. Even uh, you can remember fantastic games which were played in one of the first matches between Karpov and Kasparov. But this, uh, and, and recently there were very interesting ideas developed, but generally it's very positional line. E3, C5, D5. Queen a5, rook c1, knight e4. Generally, of course, here uh, there are other moves uh, possible. Very interesting move is either bishop e6, which is quite playable. Uh, but knight e4 is sharper line. cd5, knight c3, queen d2, and queen a2. It's old line was played many times. Myself, I played maybe 10 games with black this line. Okay, normal moves is normal move. Of course, is bc3. Mm, very interesting end game. Queen d2, king d2 was played by uh, Karpov a few times against Kasparov. Uh, one game he won against Timon. He played once. Uh, of course, Black can play queen a5. It's completely different. Uh, way of play. Of course, now it became much sharper as it was it was planned by white. So the strategy of black is, uh, from my point of view, is completely correct. But recently, uh, white returned to the old idea which was developed and invented by fantastic St. Petersburg master and very famous uh, trainer Alexander, Alexander Cherepkov. It is exchange sacrifice. Rook takes on c3. Of course, it's logical because um, if white will give up, uh, will win this black squared bishop, so black king will be in constant uh, danger. But on the other hand, look on the white, on the white king side, on the white king side. Look, everything, everything is uh, on its own place. Nothing is developed. So bishop c3. Of course, it's possible not to accept. Uh, exchange to castle, rook a1, check, uh, queen b2, and e4. Either it's, it's possible, uh, but there is equal material, and uh, generally black can play, for example, knight d7 or a5, knight e2, a4, rook c2, queen a1, rook c1, queen b2, some repetition, and knight c1, knight a6, bishop e3. The game is incredibly sharp. White has powerful center, black tries to exploit its uh, past pawn, queen b1, queen b4, f3. Uh, end game is very unclear in the Seiraman 
Nakamura, it was pretty pretty bad. So this way is, is possible. But generally, we are more interested, of course, in principal decision, which Magnus Carlsen bravely took, which is completely logical. If you can take some important piece, so take it. Queen c3 and f6. There are two other modes, like uh, queen b1, king d2, queen f1, uh, knight f3, another brave decision, threat is knight e5, terribly strong, and king c1. Of course, uh, this thing looks extremely, extremely dangerous, and it's black, white managed to develop, king side, black, queen side is not developed, f6, rook d1, queen g2, and c6. Game, lineage, uh, guys in white position is completely winning so this all checks uh, are dangerous black has to try to develop uh, to protect king side immediately white plays knight f3 of course well, now it's time to develop everything uh, magnus played bishop d7 and bishop e2 queen d5 and castle knight c6 how we can evaluate this position there are equal pawns but white pieces are extremely active, fantastic development. Of course, if black will be able to castle, but now, long or short, black will have problems. But after before, it becomes clear that it would be necessary to forget about long castle, uh, because after b5 and c6, position will be of the king will be completely open, and uh, position will be extremely dangerous. So... Magnus tries to counter strike, b5, knight b4, rook d1, queen e4, and now very strong move was played, knight e1. Why it's strong move? Because Magnus' idea was to speculate some way with the queen exchange after queen c2, but with move knight e1, white first of all eliminates this threat, and on the other hand appeared terrible threat bishop f3. This threat is so, is so terrible that black has to do something. So Magnus tried knight d5, queen d2. Not possible to take on e f4. Uh, because after this move, white can uh, play differently. Maybe possible to play first, uh, sorry, first to take on d7. King plays, king goes to f7, and then bishop, bishop f3. And next move, uh, pawn takes on f4. And black is in deep trouble. So, Magnus against one U played e6, and now knight c2. Now white started to play to play positionally. White wants to return uh, knight into the center, but black A was able to castle, but bishop d6, very powerfully placed bishop, uh, very strong bishop. Bishops are stronger than uh, rooks, of course, black has this um, uh, good chance if it would be possible to move a pawn, but uh, position in the center is uh, disastrous. So rook fd8, knight d4. Now different threats like bishop f3 are extremely unpleasant, and you see, it's a sign. If queen goes out of the center, it means that black has really huge, huge problems in bishop c4. You see? Look, compare position of all white powerful pieces in the center with uh, not so active position of black of black rooks plus additionally of, of black queen so with the exchange sacrifice white was able to centralize everything and to obtain extremely strong pressure in the center every white piece practically stronger than black ones Magnus played rook e8, defending against knight e6, but it doesn't help. Take, take, bishop b7 now is terrible threat, and now, additionally, white won a pawn and obtained extremely dangerous passed pawn. Rook d8, Magnus tries to exploit pin, and c7. Simple tactics, even we can't say that it's even, even tactic, and you see, pawn c7 is so powerful, uh, with bishop and additional pin. Black is in big trouble, b6. Now it's clear that pawn b6 uh, supports c7 pawn. With such pawns, uh, you know, 
black has huge problems. White has no, what is it, no danger to even to miss something. King f7, queen b7, additional pawn, take, take, and queen c8. Now it's queen in game. Black has some chances uh, for perpetual, but these chances are not serious. And now very good move like queen a6, protecting against queen f1 check. Black tries queen d7, queen d1, and king g3. Queen g1, and typical maneuver in the king's, uh, in the queen's endings, that king is uh, going closer to own pawns and winning the game easily, easily. Check, check, king d3, check, and now you see king is safe under protection of own queen. Black resigned.